all your friends are so worried right now. You gotta believe in her, like, you gotta believe that she's gonna come back. And hopefully, somewhere on the way, we will get somebody who comes forward who knows something. A beautiful and vibrant young woman goes missing, and nobody knows where she is. Nobody's seen or heard anything from her, and the only person who does know has gone missing. Georgia Williams was born in Shropshire in England on the 7th of September in the year of 1995. She was a bright and highly intelligent child, described as a kind and bubbly soul. She had an extremely close and loving relationship with both of her parents and her older sister. Family life was great under the one roof. Georgia's father Stephen was a respected police officer and the breadwinner of the family. Lynette was a stay-at-home mother, giving all of her time to her daughters, Scarlett and Georgia. Georgia Williams enjoyed her schooling. She was a typical straight-A student, a school prefect, leading the way with good morals as a fine example for her classmates and students. Her maturity would soon see her join the Air Force cadets, always dreaming that one day she would join the Royal Air Force as a paramedic. Georgia was no different from any other girl. She loved being outdoors, playing sports, and she enjoyed the attention and company of her friends. She was known for her infectious personality and smile, an acute sense of humour, making her super popular with all that knew her. At 17 years old, and as soon as she was old enough to work, she found paid part-time employment at a local petrol station, and it was there she quickly made friends with her work colleagues. In and amongst her new group of friends was a 23-year-old male called Jamie Reynolds. Jamie Reynolds was in the same year at school as Georgia's older sister, Scarlett. In fact, Georgia's parents had met Jamie on a couple of occasions whilst at the petrol station, always describing him as a pleasant and polite young man. And not before too long, um, Jamie boy, he... He took a liking to Georgia, making his feelings for her apparent. And even though Georgia didn't feel the same way, gently rejecting his advances, she still didn't let that determine her from spending time with him as a friend. Purely because when Georgia was very young, she was bullied at school. She knew the feeling of being an outcast and made to feel different and being alone. And Georgia being an empath, she didn't want anybody to feel the same pain she felt by being ignored. You could easily say that this was typically one of her amazing traits she had. Um, she, she literally was just a, a beautiful all-around individual, a sweetheart. She, she, she was lovely. Now, Jamie worked as a full-time staff member at the petrol station and was mostly always working there when Georgina would start her shift. And this one time at work, Jamie told Georgia that he had a big passion and a keen interest in photography. He told her that he wanted to pursue a career in photography one day, as he didn't want to work in a petrol station for the rest of his life. And so Georgia and other work friends would often encourage him and support him with his dream whenever they could. And so one day whilst at work, Jamie asked Georgia if she wouldn't mind modelling for some photographs for his portfolio. Georgia, not wanting to let him down, happily agreed to do so, and a date was set. The date was set for the weekend, Sunday the 26th of May, in the same year of 2013, with an agreed meet time for 7.30pm at Jamie's parents' house. Fast forward just eight days, and the date is now the 26th of May, and at around 7.15 in the evening, Georgia told her parents about her plans and that she would be back home later. Georgia being the reliable and responsible person she was, her parents didn't find any cause or need for worry or concern. And with that, she left the family home on foot as Jamie only lived just a few minutes walk away.
The time was closer to 11 p.m. in the evening, and with no sign of Georgia home, her mother Lynette sent Georgia a text message asking her if everything was going okay and what time she would be home. Lynette received a text message back saying that the photo shoot had finished, but she was staying out with some friends a little longer and that she didn't really know what time she would be home. However, the very next morning, that being a Monday morning, at around 6 a.m., Lynette opened Georgia's bedroom door to check up on her, but upon seeing her bed untouched, Lynette became extremely concerned as to why her daughter hadn't come back home. Lynette almost immediately with panic sent another text message to Georgia asking her where she was. Lynette received a response message just a few hours later saying that she had lost track of time and that she's staying with her friends at her friend's house and forgot to message to let anyone know and that her phone battery is about to die. And yeah, it was just kind of odd because this kind of careless behavior just wasn't like Georgia at all. And given the fact that Georgia would never want or cause people to worry, as she was much more responsible than that, it was just not like her at all. That Monday, Georgia missed her very first driving lesson and a planned music festival, two of the things that Georgia was most hyped and excited about. And yeah, from this moment onwards, both of her parents, they, they just knew, they knew that something was wrong. It was now Tuesday morning, and no one had heard anything or seen anything of Georgia in almost two days. And it was at this point both parents really started to panic. They began texting and ringing around all of their friends to see if anyone had seen her or if she had stayed at anyone's house overnight. But all the responses were the same. No one had seen her, and no one had heard from her. Yeah, and something else that was really odd about this situation. Every time somebody rung Georgia's phone, it would ring and then all calls were being diverted to her voicemail. Loved ones made desperate appeals on Facebook and as word quickly began to spread that Georgia was missing, her parents informed the police. Unfortunately, they could only provide very little information to the police, stating that she had spent her last known evening with a friend called Jamie Reynolds. And when the police arrived at Jamie's house, guess what? Yep, he wasn't there. And in fact, he was nowhere to be seen. And so with that, the police decided to run a quick routine background check on Jamie Reynolds. And um, yeah, the information that came back, it immediately, immediately concerned the police. And, and rightly so, because... um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jamie Reynolds, he had been a very naughty boy and a very busy one at that. Because in 2008, at just age 17, Reynolds was given a warning for strangling a 16-year-old girl after he had lured her back to his house under false pretenses. Reynolds was then made to attend the youth offending team along with the mental health services for further assessments. His deeply concerned parents told both teams that he also had an unhealthy obsession with violent sex films and hardcore snuff movies. They also said that they found seven disturbing pictures of young girls wearing school uniforms that had had their faces scribbled out and then he drew a noose around their necks. Now get this, because both the youth offending team and the mental health team, they both independently determined that he poses a real significant risk. But unbelievably, the police took no further action, believing that the case had been, <laughs> in their own words, suitably resolved. And just a few years on in 2011, Jamie Reynolds appeared on the police radar once again. But this time for purposely driving his vehicle into a colleague's car just after she rejected him romantically and sexually. But as no checks were made at that moment in time that linked him to the 2008 case, he was handed a fine and again, no further action was taken. Anyways, back to the storyline. So, um, Jamie Reynolds, he, he was nowhere to be found at this point and the police were desperately needing to talk to him to start their investigations. And so by using CCTV and number plate recognition technology, Jamie Reynolds' van was spotted at a cheap hotel almost 300 miles away in Glasgow, Scotland. And even more concerning, there was no sign of Georgia Williams anywhere. In this eerie CCTV video footage, Reynolds can be seen in a car park changing into new clothes 
while stood next to his van. The Shropshire Police took no time at all and contacted the police office in Scotland, fortunately. Reynolds was soon detained and then taken to the police station for questioning over the whereabouts of Georgia Williams. He then gave a full statement in an interview, um, claiming that, uh, you know, he doesn't know anything about Georgia's whereabouts. <laughs> no, he, he wouldn't, would he? he? Why would he? Well, I'll tell you why he would, because he's a scumbag. Anyway... However, the police didn't buy any of his complete and utter bolognese trashy story because of the things he was saying and muttering simply didn't make any sense. It, nothing really added up. And with the knowledge of his background, he was finally arrested under suspicion of withholding information. He was then brought back to the Shropshire Police Station for further interrogation. And once he arrived at the station, Jamie Reynolds' attitude changed, as he was now refusing to speak, saying barely nothing and denying all cases put towards him. The police search unit from the criminal investigation team headed back to George's last known location, the location being Reynolds' home address, to carry out a thorough and in-depth search of the property. And on first glance inside Reynolds' property, everything seemed to be normal. It seemed to be okay. You you wouldn't suspect anything had happened there. Well, that was until they found, or should I say, stumbled upon a brutal, horrific discovery that came in the form of a memory card. A memory card that was found within Reynolds' camera. The detectives noticed that the card had been wiped clean. And with today's technology anyway, the police simply just rolled back the date on the camera. And guys, what they found on this memory card was grim, to say the least. The card contained horrifying and disturbing images. Images that explained exactly what had happened to Georgia Williams. The pictures clearly show that Georgia had been physically beaten and then forced to stand up on a wooden box whilst wearing a noose around her neck. Scumbag Jamie Reynolds took many photographs of Georgia as she was in absolute fear, shock and horror as she was clearly begging for her life. And once he had finished taking photographs of her alive, he then kicked the box away from under her feet hanging her as she begs to stay alive. And once he was done watching her hang, he then raped her dead body, which he also photographed. The complete fear and absolute horror on her face was apparent, making these photographs uncomfortably hard to psychologically profile. Awful images that were so shocking, the police dealing with the case, they simply couldn't believe their eyes. They, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. It was truly a sick and disturbing, twisted and disgusting murder. Hours later, the following morning, in the early hours at around 5.20am, a senior detective paid a visit to the Williams household. And before this detective could even say a word, both parents broke down in tears. They already instinctively knew that their amazing and brilliant, beautiful daughter was no longer alive. A devastating and heartbreaking experience for both parents. Of that, I'm sure. Meanwhile, Jamie Reynolds was being confronted with the photos and was then arrested for murder, whilst at the same time, still refusing to tell the police any information. And most of all, refusing to tell the police where George's body was hidden. What a complete and dirty, stinking piece of Bolognese trash this guy actually is. The least he could do was tell the police where the body was, but no. He, he was far too cruel and cold and calculated. He... He didn't care, he, he simply didn't care. And so with nothing helpful coming from Reynolds, the police began to formulate an accurate timeline of Reynolds' movements the days after Georgia disappeared by using CCTV. The day after Georgia went missing, Jamie Reynolds was spotted on camera filling up his fan with fuel at a petrol station. However, little did anybody know that at the time, Georgia was already dead, and her beaten, lifeless body lay in the back of his van. He then drove with the dead body in the back, 60 miles to Wrexham in Wales, where he then stopped off to watch a movie at the cinema.
a Fast and Furious movie. In fact, it was the same movie he'd previously asked Georgia to watch with him. And then after watching the film, he then left the theatre. And that's all the police really knew up to this point. But in order to find Georgia's body, the police would soon turn their attention to the general public. I'd like to concentrate the, the public's mind, please, uh, on a vehicle, which is the vehicle I have to my left here. It's the uh, highest van CX-06 ASV. The last time we identified that vehicle was at five o'clock uh, in Wrexham, uh, in North Wales. Following that, we identified the vehicle at 10.30 p.m. that evening, so a gap of about five and a half hours uh, in Queensferry, Cheshire, heading north. And we're obviously very keen from the public, or from anyone who has information, to identify where that vehicle may have been in that five and a half hour gap. And after this appeal, many members of the public came forward to tell the police that they had all seen this van. But it was one eyewitness in particular that came forward with substantial information. In fact, the eyewitness claimed to have helped Reynolds that same night, after he left the cinema, because his crappy van got stuck at the side of the road near a shady turn-off leading into an open field, meaning the police had an accurate area of search. And within just five days of Georgia going missing, the police found her dead body. She was found naked and barely hidden in a wooded area next to an overgrown field near Wrexham. And on the 2nd of December in the same year of 2013, Jamie Reynolds appeared at Stafford County Crown Court, laughing as he entered the courtroom and showing no remorse. However, on the 19th of December, and once he was found guilty and handed a full life order, his demeanour soon changed. A full life order is the harshest sentence given in British criminal law. In other words, he's f***ed and will definitely spend the rest of his life sleeping next to another man. I mean, sleeping in a metal can. Let's just hope he's got enough soap to unplug himself clean. But, um... That's not all there is to know. Yep, don't worry. Your boy, I, I got you covered. An internal investigation into how the police had failed to carry out checks on Jamie Reynolds' past was soon underway, and subsequently six police officers from West Mersey, a police force, were all served with misconduct and fired from the force in connection regarding to the 2008 and 2011 cases. Um, we could and should have done better. It is as simple as that. We could and should have done better. Um, we let Georgia down, we let Steve and Lynette down, we let Jadine down, and as you'll see in the report, um, there's some other young people referred to, and we let them down as well. So there you go, another case closed, with no room for error. I'd also like to give a massive shout out to Gemma Wardle for joining our YouTube Patreon and supporting the channel. You truly are awesome. Hello there, and thank you for watching another episode of When Evil Follows. And guys, we upload true crime horror videos each and every week right here on this channel. So if you like true stories from the dark, guaranteed to make things go bump in the middle of the night, then we got you covered. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell. That way you'll get notifications each and every time we upload cool and interesting creepy videos similar to this one. Please don't forget to hit the like button as it's the easiest and politest way to show your appreciation. So what do you think to this case? Could the police have done more? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Hello. And if you're still game for more true crime, then check out these two creepy videos. Go on. I dare you. And until next time, guys, do look after yourself and stay safe. And I'll see you again real soon, the next time, when evil follows. Bye.